The Ballinger saga continues as a family member speaks up. It actually is gossip. And Tana Mojo's new stalker has fans worried. Every time I talk about it, I get so stressed out and like paranoid to live my life, which I absolutely hate. Let's get into it. Our first story involves a familiar name, the Ballingers. On October 2nd, the Ballinger family uploaded a video explaining they were attending a party for Jojo Siwa. Today, we are going to a very special party for our friend Jojo. For context, the Ballinger family is a family vlog account featuring Chris Ballinger, brother of Colleen, and his wife and children. Colleen and her sister Rachel have made appearances on the channel. As we know, Jojo recently got backlash for defending Colleen and, in turn, ultimately minimizing the experiences of former fans. The problem is the internet was able to capitalize off of her her cancellation and they still are and it's it's not okay because a lot of it is based off of lies so naturally the ballinger family's video caught the attention of viewers one longtime fan had a lengthy conversation with the family in the comments section of their video she wrote yikes jojo hope james charles isn't there i just can't support this behavior of being surrounded by people who are problematic makes me sad the Ballinger family liked two comments defending their actions, which stated, Would you let go of a friend because people who never met her, never met her friends, have opinions on her? We don't know Jojo. They do. They then responded praising Jojo's character and explained they are not in contact with James but wish them well. The family called on the fan to look at their engagement with gossip culture. We have entered into a new sad era where it is more profitable to complain about and destroy other humans than to lift them up. The best quote I have heard about this experience is, if you have a problem with me, call me. If you don't have my number, then you don't know me well enough to have a problem with me, the Ballinger family wrote. The family also added if their channel is no longer a happy space, they respect the fans' decision to unsubscribe. Amidst the conversation, the Ballinger family liked a comment describing some of the videos being made about Colleen as crazy conclusion mob mentality. The fan clarified, you're right, I don't know you personally, or any of these people, but it's really hard to get past her being friends with James and all of the things he'd admitted to doing in the past. I'm not worried about the people supporting JoJo, I'm worried about JoJo supporting the wrong people. She added in another comment, It's such a slap in the face to leave this shady comment when I was saying how I felt about the people she supports and brings her fans to a terrible individual. It's very apparent that you couldn't care any less about the reasoning behind why your fans are unsubscribing. The fan also expressed feeling hurt about being told to leave the fandom if she's unhappy, revealing she's been a fan for almost a decade. The Ballinger family clarified they were not forcing her to unsubscribe, but if she is unhappy, she should please find a space that brings you peace and joy. They also clarified that liking the mob mentality comment was not directed at the fan but told her, do not come here and accuse anyone of being a terrible individual. Expanding on the accusations towards James Charles, the family wrote, it actually is gossip. I haven't seen any proof of that. The fan responded the proof about James is available in his apology video, which references the underage victims and his apologies to them. She then expressed feeling hurt about the way the conversation was handled, writing, it doesn't seem that you care about your fans who are disappointed and it hurts my feelings. I'm not looking for sympathy. I comment one thing and it blows up in my face. Is this not a platform for people to have their voices heard? Maybe a bit of constructive criticism? In the decade I've been watching and commenting on your vlogs and buying your sweatshirt and merchandise, and this is the post where I get eaten alive and receive the most communication from you guys that I've ever had, and it's this comment? Ugh, I'm just upset. In response, the Ballinger family explained they would delete any negative comments towards the fan. The family also revealed they never saw James's apology video and added, All I'm hearing from you is that he's apologized multiple times for something, and now Jojo is friends with him. That sounds like a very normal human response. We should all aim to be more forgiving as a society. The fan continued to stand firm with her concern about Jojo's friendship with James and wished the Ballinger family the best. Amidst the conversation, the family liked a comment from a different fan defending Colleen from predatory claims. The Ballinger family ended their response to the thread with a comment encouraging anyone with incriminating info to bring it to authorities. And without naming names, the family seemed to reference Trent Ballinger as they brought up Ollie, someone Trent chatted with inappropriately during Ollie's teenage years. 
I think anyone with evidence of any crimes should, of course, bring it to authorities and be investigated appropriately. I personally do not have that evidence. But from what has been shared, I can still use an abundance of personal caution with my kids and make choices accordingly. I am sad for Ollie, who has always been a sweet, genuine person who shouldn't have had that emotional burden at that age, the family wrote. The family vaguely explained Trent's developmental delay is more significant than what is publicly known, and added their family has had no contact with him since they learned about his behavior a few months ago. The Ballinger family also shared that they spoke to their kids who confirmed they have not experienced anything similar with Trent. Colleen Ballinger and Trent Ballinger have yet to address the ongoing allegations about them. Our next story comes from an influencer who's been on the platform since 2015, Tana Mojo. Internet personalities are no stranger to unwavering attention from fans. But for some admirers, the line between fandom and obsession begins to blur. Throughout Tana's time on YouTube, she shared numerous stalker stories. So, like, I have a stalker. Well, if you're new here, I have a crazy f***ing stalker. When I said in my first stalker story, like, I may die from this. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about why I think my stalker is back. Do you know that my st your stalker came for me? But nothing quite like this ongoing situation. The first time in my life where it makes my OG stalker genuinely feel like a piece of cake. Like, I could yeah. take him. Like, in comparison to this person and mm -hmm. their build and the things they've been doing. On October 1st, on Tana's cancelled podcast, Tana went into detail about how frustrated and scared she is about this situation. This haunting tale began three or four years ago when Tana lived in the iconic Hype House. Also during this time frame, specifically in 2020, Tana launched an OF page to post subscription-based adult content, which Tana implies might be where her stalker developed feelings for her. I totally know that with OnlyFans comes the ability of people talk to you all day every day and they think that they know you and if somebody maybe isn't mentally fully well they begin to think that they have like a, re a real relationship with you that they're really dating you and that they they can show up to where you are tana said she felt bad talking about the situation explaining she understands this is the price she pays for being an of influencer tana wasn't alone in this ordeal her friend ashley schwan also an of influencer was a target too. The stalker began by sending Ashley a creepy message about spotting her at a Korean barbecue joint, complete with a photo taken from across the street. Things escalated quickly. Days after the Korean barbecue incident, the stalker sent pictures of himself, covered in dirt, hiking near Tana's residence. The creep factor hit new heights when he declared, I'm by your house, along with a photo. He sends a photo of him hiking the hill that our house was on, with like a knife, like knifing at like some rocks to like get through to where our house was. It's one thing to be on the street yeah. and by our house. It's like you had to I'm like- by your house in the bushes. In the mountains. And there, it's not even like a hiking trail. After the hill photo, Tana hired security. But the stalker continued to show up. Tana noticed a disturbing pattern with every stalker she's had. They often go silent for a while, only to resurface stalking again and with more strange behavior. Moving homes didn't deter the stalker either. Every time I've moved, within the first month of me moving, this person makes it so known that, like, I know your new address and I know where you are. Tana explained she lived at David Dobrik's house for two weeks before the stalker found her whereabouts and left a letter at the gate without being caught on the home security cameras. There was a security camera outside and he perfectly, like, walked and weaved to set the note, like, right where... It, like, wasn't in the eyeline of the security. After David's house, Tana moved to a secret hideaway house in Ogden, one that wasn't publicly known and did not use her real name. I put my house in, like, an alias, so, like, if you look up, like, Tana Mojo house, it's not on, like, white pages. The stalker still found the house immediately. Precautions weren't enough, so Tana had to take desperate measures. So I'm just hiring 24-hour secu hour security, which is so upsetting because it's like it's 30 so grand a month. So expensive, And if, yeah. you, if you tally it out, it makes sense why it's that much. You're paying someone 24 hours a day to sit outside of your house with a... After the Ogden incident, Tana moved once again. This time, a house atop a hill, a specific location that many celebrities reside in because it's hard to find. And I picked this house with no backyard, no separate entrances, no like windows like there is one no service no service <laughs> um there's there's um one front door despite moving to the home under an alias within a week her stalker sent an abundance of flowers to her door 
Initially, Tana mistook the gift from a man she was talking to online, but realized the initials on the flowers belonged to a stalker. Amid the chaos, the stalker delivered a mysterious jar filled with thousands of notes titled, Reasons Why I Love You. It was an eerie reminder of his obsession. After this, Tana reached out to the police, but their response was far from comforting. And they're like, it's not a crazy boyfriend. Like, are you sure it's not? And then they find out what you do for a living. And they're like, well, it's your fault. You put your whole life out there. Despite the police allegedly being dismissive, Tana asked them to come by and to file a police report. Police allegedly told Tana they would come by the next day in the evening. Tana asked them to come right away due to travel plans the next day. And they're like, well, it seems like you don't really care about it. So Tana hired security full time again, who warned her about the sad reality. And the head of my security is kind of like, Tana, I'm sorry, but no one's ever going to care, especially in L.A., unless there is a body or a... And if it wasn't flowers, Tana would receive anonymous Amazon packages. Tana recalled posting about a missing ingredient she wanted, chamoy. Within a couple of days, she received a case of jumbo-sized chamoy. Initially, Tana's friends told her it was likely an accidental order Tana made while on medication, and they even encouraged her not to call the police since getting a package of food isn't quite life-threatening. But the packages were not from Tana. The stalker would confirm they were from him by sending Tana a text message saying, Did you get your chamoy? Despite the scary situation, Tana's friends and co-host, Brooke Schofield, joked about the stalker's thoughtfulness. And it is enough chamoy for a hundred people. Honestly, I'm talking really sweet. Leaders, everyone makes that joke and it makes me <laughs> sick. Like Hunter was like, Tana, you know, might be the one. Not funny, but. <laughs> like, but Tana didn't take this lightly. She tried calling Amazon and the flower company for more information. All of it's anonymous and they can't track anything without a police report and track yeah, anything without like, a restraining order. Can't. And when it came to getting authorities involved, that was a mission in itself. And Somebody. I can't get a restraining order filed for the life of me because this person also doesn't have a place of residency. They live out of their car. Tana explained she is now living in yet another new home. She wasn't at her new home for long before she left for Malibu for a breather from L.A. life. In Malibu, Tana and friends rented an Airbnb, which the stalker somehow caught wind of. I notice that on the doormat wedged into the doorknob, wedged into the front gate's doorknob, and on all over Paige's car, Paige's car that was parked outside, are these business cards with the name of the person who has been bothering me. The stalker posed as a handyman on business cards, which Tana believes was a tactic to get hired by Tana's team or let into the Airbnb. That day, Tana and friends left the rental to relax at a beach house. Within my like first eight hours of being there, he messages me drone shot photos of the ha beach house I'm staying in. Yeah, in that's Malibu. crazy. And he's like, it looks amazing. Like the view. And so I'm like, are you f kidding me? Like, I just want three days of peace. I just wanted to like get away from my house and like hope nothing happens. Then evening came by and the crew decided to go out for dinner. Tana's friend Imari Stewart decided to stay back at the Airbnb. Imari received an unexpected doorbell ring to which he called Tana to confirm if anyone was expecting a package. Nope, no one was. Tana, caught off guard, swiftly instructed Imari to lock the doors and call the police. But instead, Imari went up to the Airbnb's balcony to assess the situation. There he was, a man sitting in his car, the very stalker that haunted Tana's life. Finally, they had to face the stalker. Imari then approached the door and uttered, hello, but the stalker remained silent. After this incident, Tana ended her Malibu stay early and called her security to take her back home to LA. But once Tana got home, she had another surprise at her doorstep. I feel like I get a notification that the doorbell rang. I'm trying to connect to the camera. No one's on the camera. So it's like someone carefully rang the doorbell, like yeah. not in front of the camera. And I get home to like six heart-shaped pizzas. And the most recent news. In late September, the stalker sent Tana a photo of a shed he built. He later unsent the photos. Paranoid, Tana shared her thoughts. But like, yeah, where wait, is the shed? Am wait, I going to end up you in sent it? In the group when Tana sent the photo of the shed to Amari, he asked if she ever saw the movie The Lovely Bones, which is about a girl who was essayed and ended. The girl spent her time in the afterlife sending her family clues to find the suspect. And I, I literally, I was sobbing last night. On the podcast episode, Tana revealed a message she received that morning. Literally today, he's messaged me 
Good morning, basic dance steps. Hope you had a wonderful day, my love. I love you for being you. Tana also revealed that the stalker was sending Ashley packages. Tana said while the packages and notes he left didn't appear threatening, he's acting too personal. I just really want him to stop. The worst part about the situation is how much Tana has to do on her own. The police care so little that I'm having to get a private investigator to like stalk him down and catch him stalking me down. During the podcast episode, Brooke said she hopes the stalker isn't crazy and hopes it's just someone who is in love, but still deserves to be reprimanded. People immediately called out Brooke and Tana's friend group for minimizing the situation. Brooke, please don't be nice to weirdos. So many people lose their life because they were too polite. I hope he's just in love with you or, aw, that's cute. What a thing to say to someone with a very serious stalker situation. That's terrible, honestly. It doesn't seem like Tana has anyone in her life that takes the stalking seriously. Imagine all that money and all those friends just to be alone. Good God, dude, get new friends. Many were disappointed in law enforcement's behavior and lack of support. Some people had dark theories about how the stalker was locating Tana's whereabouts so quickly. I feel like someone close to her might be informing him of when she moves. This dude has to have her location find my iPhone. He might have air tagged you somehow or something along those lines. Also, check for bugs or taps in your security camera. A few people couldn't help but notice the stalker's calculated behavior. Instead of doing things that would absolutely get attention from the police, he's purposely doing nice and unusual things to make it hard for Tana to get authorities involved. And I feel like he's purposely doing the sweet gestures as a cover-up. The way he made it straight to Malibu with no issues, even though that trip was just a sudden decision for Tana, makes me feel even more that he's smarter than he seems. Tana, definitely trust your intuition on this one. Do not let your guard down until that MF is thrown in jail to rot. I cannot stress this enough. Your stalker is not coming from a good place. Anyone who just delusionally thought they were in a relationship with you wouldn't hide themselves from cameras, and they'd be upset that things weren't being reciprocated because they'd actually think you're together. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. That guy is clearly terrorizing you and doing it in a way that makes it hard to get police to act on it, and it's so obviously a power move. And Tana's fans might be onto something. Brian Spitzberg, author of From Attraction to Obsession and Stalking, and a professor of communications at San Diego State University explained, stalkers look for forms of leverage, whether trying to push your buttons or simply intimidate you into complying with their desired objectives. As for what that objective might be, a 2012 study revealed the motivations for stalking often include a delusional belief in romantic destiny, a desire to reclaim a prior relationship, a sadistic urge to torment the victim, or psychotic over-identification with the victim, and the desire to replace him or her. As for the stalker's seemingly non-threatening behavior, well, it could absolutely develop into something more. Michelle Gallietta, a clinician and psychology professor at City University of New York, believes there's no such thing as the typical stalker, explaining she has worked with people ranging from a high-functioning judge to a person who silently stalked his victim for two years before attempting to take her life. As for the comments asking Tana to check for tracking or listening devices, this could very well be a possibility. According to a 2014 survey from the CDC, about 49% of women and 32% of men who were victims of stalkers found out the stalker watched, followed, or spied on them with a listening device, camera, or GPS device. So you can see why fans are disappointed in law enforcement and Tana's friends and urging her to stay safe. Whether it's online feuds or a fan-turned-stalker, Stay tuned for more weekly updates. What do you think of these stories? Let us know in the comments below.